you remember when the internet gaslit a whole movie studio into re-releasing Morbius into theaters because they said it was Morbin time? Well, the exact opposite just happened because Minions Rise Up grew absolutely shattered box office records this weekend. In just three days, it brought in over $202 million, largely because of memes. This movie now has the biggest opening over the July 4th holiday weekend ever. So if you're not aware, the, the Minions franchise has become kind of one of the internet's biggest memes over the past few years. And this most recent meme was kind of a spinoff of the tickets to Joker please me. And for the Minions, the, the pictures and videos that went along with this were like young guys in suits. And so obviously the memeing in general, like it generated more attention that this movie was coming out. There was a lot of free promotion, but then, but then opening weekend happens and the internet gets flooded with all these videos of young guys in suits, usually in incredibly large groups, taking it very serious. They're here for some top tier cinema. With many of those videos getting millions and tens of millions of views use that promoting the movie even more, more people than going to the theater, but it appearing thanks to the memes and these viral videos that it actually generated dollars. And those numbers are all the more impressive because it's kind of just an okay movie. Like it's not the best of the Despicable Me movies, it's not the worst, it's just, you know, it was fun to watch with my kids in 40X. But all of that said, for some, the memes have gone too far because we're seeing more and more news coming out that there are movie theaters that are banning people from coming to the theater if they're coming in a group wearing suits. And it appears to be because in addition to these guys showing up, doing like little handshakes, taking it very serious, there are some of these gentle minion groups that take it to another level where it appears that they are messing the movie up for other people. Things like people whipping out their phone and turning on the flashlight while the movie's happening. Others just being loud and disruptive. Some going the extra step and throwing bananas at the screen. As some of these kids memeing a little too close to the sun, but this bullshit has converted into real dollars. And so for me, the, the only question is, do we see one of the biggest drop offs for week two numbers in history? Or does the meme stay strong for seven more days and we see another strong week two? Use the comments down below to put your bets in and uh, we'll, we'll look back in uh, seven or eight days. Also in the news regarding how do you get someone to watch something? boobs. And no, I'm not talking about the first seven years of the Philip DeFranco show. But rather, there's been this big debate happening online after this stunt that was pulled by a streamer by the name of Pooper Noodle. Right, and as she explained it on Twitter, I made the decision to buy a pair of boobs and wore them on stream today and uh, showing her viewer analytics and it appeared that most of her numbers about doubled. 1,471 average viewers up from 651. Almost 2,400 max concurrent viewers compared to 1,059. Way more subs, way more followers, way more live views, way more everything. With Dexerto also reporting that a day after this, she went live again and she brought Cast it to an average viewership over double what she was previously. And so following this, we saw the post blow up, a lot of people having a lot of different takes, some of which did not sit well with Pooper Noodle, and so she responded, I'm seeing some really bad takes and would just like to clear things up. One. Women don't have it easier on Twitch. They get a better initial start, but can't break through the glass ceiling that male creators can. This is due to multiple reasons. Two, everyone loves boobs, not just men or simps. Three, watching a female streamer or finding their content entertaining does not make you a simp, you absolute buffoons. Four, it's worth noting I didn't just put on the boobs. I was wearing this cosplay for 13 hours while trying to defeat the hardest content, Vicus Raid Hard Mode. I also had Twitch drops activated on my channel. Five, a lot of people are mad that I'm, quote, deceiving men. If this is you, please go outside and talk to a real life person. Maybe one day you'll even get to talk to a woman. And six, women aren't boobs. And personally, I'll say I agree with five out of six of those, with my only question mark being around number four, because her saying that it wasn't just the boobs seems to go against her initial post. Right, that post really never emphasizes any part of her cosplay outside of the boobs, though I do think that it includes important context and it can be a mixture of the two things together. And so with this story, of course, I'd love to know your thoughts on any and all aspects of it, but the two final notes I wanna hit on. One, this is just a confirmation of everything we knew. Everyone loves boobs, man, woman, whatever. And two, uh, Lindsay, please do not look at our Amazon order history. News views usually trend down in the summertime and uh, I'm just doing what I gotta do. And then what would you do if your employer accidentally paid you 330 times your normal paycheck? Sounds like a weirdly specific hypothetical, but one guy in Chile actually had to ask himself that question recently. Now currently we don't know his name, but we do know that he was a dispatch assistant at the Cold Meats Manufacturer Consortium. When he got paid his monthly wages for May, he was expecting around $545, which to put into context is not much more than half the average take home pay of around $900. But instead, when he checks his bank account, he doesn't see 545, he finds $180,418, which in fact is around the same that top CEOs get compared to typical workers. But you know, what we see is this guy go, hey, I, I have a conscience. He goes to his manager at work, he tells him what happened. The manager then tells HR and they say, hey, no worries. We're gonna get this sorted. Just give us back the money. He says, yeah, of course, tomorrow. And like pretty much everything that I put off till tomorrow, he doesn't 
doesn't follow through. Maybe the little devil on his shoulder finally broke through. He's like, you're making a lot of sense. He just takes the cash and bolts. With his attorney already putting that money to good use, sending in a letter several days later saying, hey, this guy is resigning. And so the company has filed a complaint with the authorities alleging that he misappropriated funds, though there hasn't been an arrest made yet, though that's largely because this man has not been found or heard from since this happened. And so with this story, there are questions. Is this guy in the wrong for taking the money and running? To which I would say, usually according to the law, that is technically illegal, which is why my main question is, what would you do? Because I can see this from two ends. As a former broke ass kid, I think there's definitely a time and place I would have taken that money, run, just started a life somewhere else. But on the other side of this, as an employer, Oh. With how insurance benefits and everything works, I've accidentally overpaid employees in the past before. I've just kind of made them whole. I'm not gonna be that boss that's like, hey, we overpaid you, so you're gonna have to pay us back. But I've never overpaid someone by $150,000. If one of my people took my money and ran, oh, you betray my trust, you're dead to me. You take my money, you're just dead. Also, my HR department and my lawyer would like to explain that what I just said is a joke, and I'm not currently practicing my shocked face for when the news comes out that the person that stole money from me accidentally stabbed themselves 13 times. That was also a joke. Let's move on before I incriminate myself some more. And then, this is probably the first time you've ever heard about this, but did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time of the 35? Well, that's part of the reason I wanna thank and talk about today's sponsor, Keeps. Maybe you have that friend or that family member that's dealing with hair loss, and you don't have to just sit around and wait for that to happen to you. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps has you covered. Keeps helps you stop hair loss before it's too late with a scientific and affordable approach to treatments that are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. Plus, in addition to clinically proven treatments, Keeps has an award-winning all-natural thickening shampoo and conditioner system. And you can get these products delivered directly to your door, meaning no more going in person to the doctor's office for your prescription, saving you both valuable time and money. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash DeFranco, or just click that link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. And then just Jesus Christ, just watch. 200,000 minimum ballots were trafficked by mules. No, an honest election. may I finish? Mamma mia. Hold on, let her finish, please, Scott. Okay. God, they talk over me and I'm Italian. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> you know I'm what? Irish. Okay. Why not get high-tech people that are going to be on the machines that are Republicans? A Democrat, Republican, get supervisors, that, that, equal amount. That happens. That, we, we have parties we, looking over th that's election right. results. They're, they're mm -hmm. doing it now. No, no, they, they they're actually telling they they to have Listen, I haven't been on a stage with this many women since I've been to a baby shower. It's okay. been a while. I, I don't know how that's going to go over, Scott, but we'll let that hang. <laughs> I'm pro-life from conception to death, and I believe- No we, exceptions for rape or incest? Well, that's a gray area. I, I don't know. That's a personal decision for a person. Well, why can't we treat human life in the same way that we would treat alien life that know. we discovered how on would, an alien how planet? Would you... There's a reason we don't always invite Scott, because he's polling at 0%. No, 1%. And this is what happens when you- But the polls you... lie. Scott, please. <laughs> the only kind of drag I've ever dressed in is a business suit or construction work clothes. I've never aspired to be Elvis Presley. That's a shame. All right, that's. We I have feel like state. I'm on an SNL skit here. Are we going to take it, control of the debate? We are or taking. Do you want me to no, do it? no, no, Carrie. I don't want I'm you to try to, to do it. it. I know you would be okay. happy to do it. So first off, Carrie, uh, no, the, the writing on SNL is not this good. And for everyone else going, what the hell did I just watch? Those four people are running to be the governor of Arizona. You've got 200,000 mules, Carrie Lake. I only see women on a full moon. Scott Neely, the Italian mama herself, Paola Tuliani, Zen, and Karen Taylor Robson, who, by the way, is the only candidate who refused to say that the 2020 election was 100% stolen. And I mention that because all four of them are Republicans. Two of the people on that stage very well could be the next governor of Arizona. When you look at this debate that happened last Thursday with PBS moderator Ted Simons, it's uh, it's scary. Like I understand why the internet has eaten this up with one compilation alone garnering over 10 million views just in the last few days. But like election denier Carrie Lake noted, this is not SNL. It's not a joke. It's not a skit. These people are vying to lead the state of Arizona, which is why you have so many people genuinely worried, including Democratic Senator Senator Chris Murphy calling the clip a must watch and saying it's both sad and scary what's happening to this party because what we saw in that debate and there's much more to watch like that doesn't exist in a vacuum this is a snapshot of the real world and I mean you don't even need to look outside of the state of Arizona to see the real world effects of this bullshit the election was a scam narrative on Friday it was reported that two Arizona election officials had decided to resign specifically because of threats that began following the 2020 election with one of them telling Fox 10 Phoenix I'm a Republican recorder living in a Republican county where the candidate that they wanted to win won by two to one 
in this county and I'm still getting grief and so is my staff. I'm not sure what they think that we did wrong. And they're very nasty. The accusations and the threats are nasty. But even saying very nasty, that's a pretty mild way of putting it. Like hell, the county sheriff had to give her extra protection and even started doing regular patrols of her home in response to the threats that she had received. Threats that notably she never had gotten until this election. And understand, they are far from the only ones. We've seen election officials resigning en masse for similar reasons in other states as well. But yeah, to, to bring it back to Arizona, if all of this concerns you and you happen to live there, primaries will be held on August 2nd. Though, notably, the state also has universal mail-in voting and those should be sent out this week. Though, of course, this is just one battle. This is not just an Arizona problem. And I don't know, I, I just wish there could be an election where I just feel like, you know, the, the last vestige of democracy didn't hinge on the result. Ugh, happy 4th of July, everyone. And then finally, with living another day in America, we have another story involving guns. I mean, fuck, as I started recording this video, I saw breaking news that there was a mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois. There are already reports that there are at least five dead. It's a developing situation, so we are going to talk about it tomorrow. But for the end of today's show, I want to talk about why people are protesting in Akron, Ohio. Or because some are saying this is in response to one of the most explosive instances of police brutality since George Floyd. With a young man at the center of this story being 25-year-old Jalen Walker. And the story actually starts last Monday when city police attempted to stop a silver Buick that Walker was driving for a traffic and equipment violation. And it's just now gaining so much attention because police yesterday released 13 versions of highly disturbing body cam footage from the incident at a press conference. And during that presser, police said that Walker refused to stop, instead taking off with the cops in pursuit. And around 40 seconds later, body cam footage captures what the officers believe to be a gunshot from Walker's car. 21 shots fired, that vehicle just had a shot come out of its door. And so the chase continues for several more minutes until Walker eventually stops and exits his car wearing a ski mask and then running away on foot. The cops attempt to tase him but fail, then staying in pursuit, with Walker finally reaching a parking lot where he stops and turns towards the officer for a brief moment, which is when they unload their weapons on him. And obviously I'm not going to show you that video, though it is readily available and easy to find. But ultimately, eight officers reportedly ended up firing over 90 rounds at him with around 60 of those wounding him. However, it is not clear how many are entry wounds and exit wounds. With the shooting lasting seven seconds, even though Walker could be seen falling to the ground in the first second with his body convulsing from the bullets afterwards. With one officer waving his hand in the air four seconds in and yelling ceasefire three times before the gunfire died down. And at the end of all this, we find out that Walker was actually completely unarmed, with many pointing out that in the videos, he doesn't even appear to be holding anything in his hands. Though police say when they searched his car, they did find a handgun and a loaded magazine. And as far as why the cops say they shot him, the police department claims that each officer independent of each other saw him reach toward his waist and begin moving into a firing position. And while the body cam footage makes it hard to see what actions Walker did or did not take, the lawyer for his family said that in a conversation with the city's police chief, the chief admitted that he didn't see any movement that put the officers in fear. And so right now you have all the officers involved being placed on paid administrative leave, with reports noting that seven are reportedly white with one black. And so that's why right now we're seeing protests erupt across the city with people facing off against riot police at the police station, with it being described as mostly peaceful, though some people reportedly tried to tear down barricades and you can see the cops deploying tear gas, as well as reports of some dumpster fires and broken windows, which has led to the mayor declaring a state of emergency emergency today, issuing a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., also canceling the 4th of July fireworks celebration that was originally scheduled. But yeah, ultimately with that, I do want to pass the question off to you because depending on where you look on the internet, people are very split. Some seeing this and describing it as the police just killing another unarmed black man. The Black Lives Matter Twitter account saying they shot him 60 times. He was murdered by Akron police, say his name, with many of the viral posts noting he was unarmed, he was murdered. But on the other side of this, you have people saying it's understandable that it went down this way, arguing that even though he did not have a weapon on him when police opened fire, he had already, according to reports, fired at police from his vehicle, making it so that every officer knew that he was armed, that he was willing to shoot at police, and that that could happen again. And in the middle of the night, adrenaline pumping after already being fired upon by a suspect, a movement could seem like a threat. And so that's why ultimately with this story, I do want to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts so far? Because this is, there is an ongoing investigation. But ultimately, that is where that story and today's show ends. Y'all, thank you for watching, being a part of the conversation. I hope you have a great rest of your fourth or whenever the hell you're watching this. But there's one thing for sure I can tell you, my name's Philip DeFranco, you've just been filled in, I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.